We've been talking about the GNS 430. Now's our opportunity to show some of the differences between that and its bigger brother, the GNS 530. Operation you're going to see is nearly identical between the two boxes. But with the larger screen, we do get the opportunity to display a few more things. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is NAV page 1. This is our CDI page, equal to CDI page on the 430. If you look at the bottom, we still have our CDI like the 430, but we got this nice big arc on top. That arc's based on our ground track, the direction we're going. This little carrot is our bearing to the station. So basically, if you put that carrot on top of the screen, you're going to get straight to where you want to go. We've got data fields in the corner here, too. There's our course. It's 58 degrees, and we're going across the ground at 58 degrees, so we're right on course. We're 71.9 miles out and doing 138 knots and 31 minutes away. So this gives us more of an EFAS-looking type display. The other neat thing with the 530 is it is a higher resolution display than on the little or brother, the 430. Something else you'll notice, too, on the 530, we've got our COM and our NAV, but we've got an extra data field down here on the side. Right now, in the factory defaults show a radial. That radial is based on what VOR you have dialed in. Right there, 113.8 is Wichita VOR, so we're off the 58-degree radial of that VOR. If I flip it, 112.8 is Emporia VOR, and that shows our radial off Emporia VOR. If you have later software, um, you will actually see the identifier of the station, the radial, and the distance. So, and if you have older software, you can go to your avionics shop and get it upgraded for free. Now, let's look at some of the other differences. Besides nav page 1 being the arc view, nav page 2 will be a map just like we're used to. You'll notice down here we have an extra button, the VNAV button. Instead of going to your last nav page on a GNS 430, you just press VNAV on this box. They operate and function just the same. One last thing I want to show is, on this data field box, if you want to change the information in there, you actually go to your aux page, number three, turn on your cursor, and you'll see down at the bottom, data field configuration. Press enter. There I've got it as VOR radial, and I could make it configurable data fields. If I do that, I can go up and highlight that area with the little knob open up the field and I have the choice of displaying whatever I would like. The other nice thing with the GNS 530 is going to be the future enhancements or add-ons to this. These boxes are actually multi-function displays. I know we do all these other functions but we'll still show uh, lightning data from a BF Goodrich WX500. You can show traffic on the map from a BFG Skywatch or the Ryan TCAD. In the future, there's going to be next rad radar uplinks you can display on our maps. The 430 will also do it, but with the big display, and it is a higher resolution display of the GNS 530, it looks fantastic. I hope you have a better understanding of the GNS 430 and 530, its capabilities and its operational aspects. For more in-depth training on it, definitely refer to our pilot's guide. If that doesn't answer all your questions, you can reach us online and email us or call our technical support at our 800 number. From all of us at Garmin International, we want to thank you for your support of our products. We feel privileged to be your avionics company.